You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity. Provided you know how to find it. That's where we come in. Welcome to the Crypto Rundown. Each week, we'll break down the latest trading activity, trends, and developments on everything from coins to tokens, futures, and even OTC options. If it's moving the crypto markets, then you'll find it on the Crypto Rundown. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody, that music means it is time once again for the Crypto Rundown, the program here on the old Options Insider Radio Network, where we go above and beyond, deep into the world of all things crypto derivatives. We're going to talk the options and futures, some spot as well, the volume, the skew, the term structure, all that good stuff. If you want to hear it, this is pretty much your go-to place. My name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, and we were off last week, of course, for the President's Day weekend here in the U.S. But now we're back, and a lot is popping off. So without further ado, let's get to it. A little bit of the old Bitcoin breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody. Like the man said, it is time for the Bitcoin breakdown, the portion of the show where we break down what the heck's going on in the world's leading cryptocurrency. Of course, Bitcoin coming into showtime. We are, like I mentioned, we were off two weeks, so we have a little bit of time between our last show and we have seen a bit of a sell-off since then. You know, for most of our previous shows leading up to that, it seemed like the narrative was rally ho, rally ho, rally ho, upside, upside, upside. This week, not so much. Of course, we're all getting caught up. In the turmoil that is wreaking havoc in the broad equity markets, we saw NASDAQ today off almost 4%, S&P and Dow off 3-plus percent today as well on these fears of the coronavirus spreading to new areas, Italy, South Korea, all these other areas, and really starting to spook people. A lot of maybe the pent-up fears about coronavirus all of a sudden hitting the market today and coming in pretty hard. A lot of people are looking to see if that would play out in Bitcoin as well. Like I said, coming into showtime, we're off a bit. From our last show, we were at about a, not quite a 98.50 on our last show, about 98.44 or so. And we were at about a 96.44, uh, so we were at almost exactly 200 handles uh, off from that. We have sold off a bit coming into showtime now as well, so at about a 96.10 right now out there. And Bitcoin puts us off about 230 handles from our last show. So not quite a wipeout, not quite a rally either, just off a bit, taking a bit of a break. Uh, from our last show, of course, there was some, was some turbulence in between then, of course, the last few weeks. Let's parse how all that has impacted what's going on in the derivative side of the fence. Volatility, surprisingly enough, the 30-day real, I know this is 30-day realized now, so a bit of a lagging frame of reference, but it's pretty much unched, which is a little surprising, right around 52%. So remember, a lot of things have to happen over the course of a month to really budge that number. And so far, it's been kind of locked around 52% for Better part of the last uh, month or so, 30-day implied similar story. You know, like we did, like I said, we didn't see a net huge sell-off 
or rally net on the last couple of weeks. So the vol numbers haven't really moved a ton. It's roughly unched the implied out there as well. It was about 58%. Now it's about 56 off a couple of percent, but nothing huge. What has been pretty huge has been the volume out there, at least on the options, front, at least when it comes to some of the primary venues still like Darabit. There were some big days since our last show. The biggest day was on the 18th. Remember, we like to use that 30 million notional as kind of a benchmark of bellwether for whether things are popping off on Darabit. 18th, it did 151 million notional. So that's a pretty active day. The 19th, similar levels, 144 million. The 20th, also 90 million. So pretty active pretty much almost every day since our last show. 21st, 72 million. 22nd, 61 million. 23rd, 72 million. And 24th, 66 million. Maybe it's time to reinvestigate that 30 million benchmark because at least recently, Darabit's been blowing the doors off out there. What have people been up to out there in Darabit of late on the options side? The big print over the past couple of weeks, uh, certainly recently, has been the SEP 4,000 puts. Yes, I said that correctly. SEP 4,000 puts. Paper buying nearly 500 of those when Bitcoin was at, it looks like, about 9671. This print went up on the 20th. No, excuse me, 19th. The 19th of February, so about five days ago. Uh, so that was a big print since pretty much our last show. Also around that time, we also saw on the 20th, we also saw Feb 85, actually, you know, March 6,000 puts. The Feb puts weren't as big. The March puts did about 200 as well, March 6,000 puts. So it was the same day, about a half an hour apart, maybe someone deciding to uh, put on a little bit of a funky time ratio put spread or maybe rolling from March to SEP. We've seen crazier things. Either way, 6,000 strike. That's already pretty far out there. Now you're going all the way down to 4,000. Uh, interesting prints out here on the put side. We're talking about some one by twos in February on our last show as well, about 8,500, I think 8,000 with those strikes. Didn't really, didn't really break through those, but uh, interesting stuff afoot out here in the put side, at least over the last couple of weeks. What's trading today out here? Looks like the big prints coming on the call side of the ledger. The Feb, 10,000 calls, uh, about almost 600 of those have traded on Darabit today. So pretty active day for the near term upside. Not exactly surprising. We're, we're not that far away from the 10,000 strike right now, but still that's the big print. Also seeing Feb 10,500 doing about 330. So maybe some ratios or verticals going up there as well. If you want puts, it's the March 8,500 put today. Let's lead in the dance out there with about 250 of those. On the tape, skew currently at about minus 8%. That's up from almost minus 11%, about 10.9% on our last show. So seeing a little bit of evolution out there in the skew. The call, the put, also effectively unched, which is kind of interesting. About 66% still for the overall OI. This is kind of combining all of the venues. OI out there as well it has been growing, growing quite a bit. Let's look across all the venues. By the way, all this data coming to you courtesy of our friends over there at skew.com. And let's see here with Darabit, obviously still the biggest venue. OI is up quite a bit. You know, it was around 300, 400 million for a while. And now 750 million, almost 749 million right now. In Darabit land, we're seeing a Ledger X number two with about 47 million. Uh, then we got uh, OK, OKX, <laughs> OKEX out there with about 67 million in open interest. And then uh, CME bringing up the rear pretty much with $18 million in terms of the big venues. OI from an options perspective. Gosh, I, I, I misspoke. Back to technically is bringing up the rear, but it's a kind of insignificant number, about a quarter of a million out there in terms of net notional in the back. So the options still not really catching fire out there in, uh, in backed land. Let's look at where the aggregate OI is. Right now it's all in March. The contract's expiring in the end of March, have about 38,500 contracts open there. So March is the big dog out here. Let's CME, not quite a big dog yet on the options, but let's see what was printed out there. The big day for them was on the 13th, so right before Valentine's Day. And I'm, I hate quoting Notional, but even CME is doing it now. So nearly 4 million Notional, about 3.8 million worth of Notional going up on third. That was a big day since our last show. Uh, the, the 14th, Valentine's Day, doing nearly 2 million worth of Notional. Today, similar level, about 1.8 million, about 37 contracts on the tape as of today. I like talking contracts. Crypto folks like talking Notional. I guess we'll meet in the middle of somewhere over there. The futures have been an interesting story out there as well on CME land. 
anemic, I think is the only way to describe the volume that's been going up out there of late, which is kind of funny because for a while they were talking about how it's been blowing the doors off, blowing the doors off. Coming into the launch of the options, everyone said the futures had done, I think, around 15,000 the, the Friday before, so everyone expected the options to really light it up, and we have seen kind of the opposite with the exception of Tuesday. Tuesday was the one big day. 23,000 was a big banger because Monday was closed. So I think a lot of that aggregate volume, we've seen that before. It kind of accrues a couple of days worth of volume on the next day. We saw that on Tuesday, 23,000. That was the one, of the one of the only, I believe, three days of over 1 billion notional volume going up on the CME futures. And that was the first one above a billion since June of last year, June 27th of last year, to be precise. So Tuesday, a big day. Then the rest of the week, kind of week, no, uh, pun intended. Wednesday, 9,800. Thursday, 4,300. Friday, 2,433. That's the lowest volume we've seen for the year, which at least, I guess, according to some chartists out there, I think Coindesk and others, a few others are talking about this. I think that's actually a bullish sign. I think that CME Bitcoin futures hitting their low for the year is a bullish sign. Uh, they talk about how uh, the open interest is still pretty strong uh, near the seven-month high of about $338 million. And so they're saying firm OI combined with a drop in actual daily trading volume, they consider that at least a sign that investors are holding on to their positions, in which case, if you're a bull out here in Bitcoin land, that should make you excited. They say in such cases, the market usually extends the preceding move and says looking at Bitcoin price moving from 7000 to 10500 in six and a half weeks to February 18th. Uh, so they think that has some legs out there. Whether you buy into that or not, I don't know. But it is a surprisingly anemic amount of volume out there on the futures, which have been blowing the doors off. So maybe that is a little bit of uh, just kind of buy and hold now, waiting and seeing what's going on. It's certainly crazier things have happened out there. The market is kind of on fire right now. No one really knows what's happening. No one knows the truth of the extent of this contagion, how impactful it may be. So people are kind of sitting there and keeping their powder dry for a little bit. It wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. Not exactly letting the doors up out there in backed futures land as well. Check out our old friend, the backed volume bot. If you want to see for yourself one of the, one of the better Twitter feeds out there. Just pure, just pure numbers, just the facts, ma'am, which I kind of like. And they, they mentioned here the activity in Bitcoin futures on ice has cooled quite a bit. Uh, OI plunging from a record high of 19 million down to 10 million in just seven days on February 20th. So a little bit of a different story on back than we're seeing on CME, where CME the OI remaining strong even though the volume is light on back to the OI going away and no volume to really replace it. So maybe not the same narrative unfolding out there. Let's keep on rolling now because you want to kind of hit some other assets out there as well. So without further ado, let's keep on rolling right on into. The Altcoin Universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the The Altcoin Altcoin Universe. Universe. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let's boldly go into the Altcoin Universe. A lot of places to visit out here. Let's start looking at the big ones, the top 10. A lot of shakeups of late in the top ten in all things all things crypto in general. So let's start there. Number one, Bitcoin, of course, uh, coming into Showtime at about 175 out there. What's it at a firm? A firm number one out there. Number two, we're seeing ETH coming in with about right around 29 billion. Number three, XRP 11. 11, almost 12 billion. Number four, Bitcoin Cash at about six, almost seven billion, 6.8 billion or so. Number five, Bitcoin SV, 5 billion, almost even. Number six, Litecoin. Oh, the mighty have fallen a little bit shy of 5 billion, about 4.8 or so out there. Number seven, Tether, 4.6. Number eight, EOS, coming in at about 3.8 and a half. Number nine, Binance Coin, about 3.4. And round out the top 10, Tezos, 2.2. Billion out there. Interesting stuff. Remember, the overall market cap number six goes with a grain of salt, but I think the, I think the rankings are fairly reliable out here. Let's go on out to the number two uh, crypto market. I know a lot of you like to pay attention to, and certainly on the options front, a clear number two. That's ETH. ETH actually had a decent run this week, up almost 40 handles. Coming at the showtime, it was right around not quite 265, about 264 and change. 
puts it up almost exactly 40 handles from where it was last show. It was about a 223 even on our last show. So a nice run here for ETH. Let's see what's been playing out out there in the options. The realized, 30-day realized up, up to about 87 from about 77% last show. Implied, weirdly unched at around 84%, but again, a little bit lighter volume in ETH. So maybe that's to blame for some of the lack of movement in the volume. Even though that volume hasn't been that light of late. The ADV, even our last show, is around 2.5 million. That's pretty much doubled. That's up to about 5 million now, the ADV. So things have been rocking and rolling out there in ETH options of late. The big day was on the 12th of February, 15 million. Notional going up on the 13th, 13 million. Uh, today, also fairly active, around 9 million. So nearly 2x at ADV today. So as the broad market melts down, ETH. Getting a nice little lift. The skew up to about minus 5%. It was nearly 7, minus 7% on our last show. OI also growing quite a bit as well, up to about 63, excuse me, 63 million from about 43, excuse me, 48 million on our last show. So that puts it in perspective. It's about a tenth of the OI that's out there on a platform like Darabits, just to give you some frame of reference for how the ETH OI market shapes up to Bitcoin. The big print out here over the past week actually coming today, 616. Of the March 400 calls going up, also paper buying those. Paper also buying 500 of the March 360 calls and 500 of the March 320 calls. So maybe a bit of a call strip. All of those going up. Actually, no, the March 320s went up yesterday. So the March 320s went up yesterday. Paper sold those. And then today, paper coming in to buy 600 of the March 400s and 500 of the March 360s. So maybe... Maybe a bit of a funky, maybe buying back. <laughs> First off, buying back. Well, actually, no, there's different strikes. So they can't, not buying them back. It's just weird paper out here. Selling big chunks of the 320 calls and then buying 360 over 400 vertical today. Maybe legging into a bit of a, a, bit of a funky three-way spread. Like we mentioned, ETH right now at about not quite 265. So still a long way away from even that 320 strike on the downside there. Ripple moving on to Ripple. Actually, before, yeah, let's move on to Ripple really quickly. Ripple down slightly here. I guess it's effectively unched on the week. It's off a fraction of a cent here. So not a huge move. Still hovering around that 27 cent level. So it hasn't been a big up or down period here for Ripple. It has had a decent surge of late this last couple of weeks. Not so much. Uh, Bitcoin Cash. Down again, down to almost the exact same interval as it was on our last show. Down 80 handles yet again, so that puts it on off 160 for our last two shows. So Bitcoin Cash holders, not exactly loving that. Bitcoin SV, kind of the other side of that coin, up about 70 handles right now. So interesting stuff popping off out here in all things altcoin. Kind of want to give you guys a quick hit so you guys can kind of get on about your business here, all things crypto. But before we do that, since we're talking about you guys, let's get some of you on the show, a little bit of your crypto questions. You've got questions about crypto. Who doesn't? It's time to find out the answers to your crypto questions. All right. Welcome to the crypto questions. This is where you guys take the reins, your questions, your comments, your pearls of wisdom. Let us know what you guys have on the brain when it comes to all things crypto derivatives. It's a confusing space. I get it. You have questions. We're we're, we're here for you. Let's kick things off with Ling. M. M. Ling. M. Ling wants to know, uh, what will it take to make ETH a viable options market? Well, you know, viable is an interesting term. Highly subjective. I think you could call it right now a pretty viable marketplace. It's a clear number, too, but it's still clearly viable. Things are printing out there. I, I, I just mentioned the OI there has grown even from our last show. It was around $48 million on our last show. Now it's about $63 million. So the OI closing in on about a tenth of what we're seeing out there on a venue like Deribit, not across all of the broad spectrum of Bitcoin venues. But in general, it's, it's getting there. I think what do we need to get it to take that next step? I think what we need first, and I hate to keep referencing these these listed Bitcoin options, but we need these products to really continue growing and continue taking off. Deribit's obviously been putting up some good numbers uh, these last few months, and so as that continues to grow, that'll just bring more volume uh, to the space. We'd like to see CME do a little bit more numbers. I'd like to see back to like to see all of them do a little bit more numbers as more of the institutional players and as more of the retail players continue to grow and discover 
the listed Bitcoin options that will hopefully pave the way to moving on to these altcoin derivatives of which ETH is clearly uh, the number two. I think maybe CME has hinted at it in the past. They have a reference rate for ETH that they disseminate, maybe putting out uh, some ETH options. I don't think they're gung-ho to do that right now because they're focused all guns in on all things Bitcoin futures and options, but that could also help generate a little bit of interest, awakening the broader financial world to what's going on in ETH out there and having some listed products they can actually trade, a future and an option. I think that would certainly help as well, but I still think we need to see more volume accreting on some of these major listed, particularly U.S.-oriented venues like CME and ICE and some of these others. They really need to start lighting it up a little bit more. When those volumes start accreting in, then we can start seeing it trickle down to the other products. Then I think we will see places like CME and others launching their ETH futures and hopefully their ETH options. And that's kind of the next leg to really get it up there and make ETH. And who knows? Maybe it could get up there to those those Bitcoin numbers. It's going to take a little bit of a little bit of gas in the tank first. And I think just more volume going up on the already listed Bitcoin derivatives to kind of get more attention to the space. And then that will, I hate to use the word trickle down, but that's effectively what we'll see happen when we get out to ETH and others. Speaking of getting out there, Julia, Julia Taylor wants to know, how far out can I trade options on CME? Well, since you're writing into this show, I'm assuming you mean the Bitcoin options on CME. So let's go look, shall we? Let's head on over to uh, the CME volume charts here and contract spec pages for their Bitcoin contracts. Here's the Bitcoin futures listed out so far here. Look at the options where we want to go. Let's scroll down. Obviously, we got Feb printing right now. They got March. They've got April, June, and then Dees. So it seems like you can go out to December on the Bitcoin options here so far there, Julia. So out to the end of the year. Hopefully, that'll, that'll do for you for your time frame needs. You know, things aren't as liquid as they'd hoped already. So I think playing much farther beyond that front month will be a little bit challenging. The spread's Obviously going to get wider as you go farther out. You go all the way out to Dece, not a lot trading. Well, let's look really quickly to see how much, how much Dece is open right now. Dece, open interest. <laughs> we have a whopping one lot of the Dece 1500s out here, which is a strange strike, to say the least. <laughs> so, yeah, these are um, bizarre strikes that have, are open out here. So, yeah, not going to be a lot. Printing is a one lot open in Dece right now. So if you're going out to Dece, it's going to be a little wide. You probably want to keep it a little bit closer just for ease of execution perspective as well. But you can, if you are so inclined, you can go all the way out to the end of the year. All right, let's wrap it up here with some words of love from Tim. Tim wants to say, just cool show. Thanks. Well, thank you, Tim. Thanks for listening. Thanks to all of you out there who join us every week, except when there's holidays. When the markets are closed, uh, we're, we're off on hiatus. But we're back here, cranking away on the crypto run. I look forward to it every week on the network. And look forward to the other programs we have here for you as well. So if you like this show, there is that theme music. If you like this show, then you're going to love shows like Twifa, where we talk about a little bit of crypto gets in there. But also we get into a lot of the other commodities and options that are out there. Maybe you want to learn about options themselves. Options boot camp, good place to go. Maybe a little bit more active, a little more cutting edge on the option spectrum, option block, volatility views. Maybe you're on the asset management side, the advisor's option. We've got a lot of shows here on the network for you guys to sink your teeth into. So head on out there and enjoy all of those at your leisure. Keep those questions, those comments, those insights coming. We'd love to hear from you guys. We'll be back next week with some more deep dives into the world of crypto on the Crypto Rundown. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. 
select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs> 